This is your 24-hour news and information station, KFOR-TV, Oklahoma City. The weather put a damper on a lot of tourist spots this spring with all the flooding, but now the weather is credited with bringing the beaches back to life. And in health this morning, they're the hottest debates in health care today. Can needles, vitamins, herbs, and minerals aid in healing? We'll take a look. For a tough guy, you do a lot of pansy things. <laughs> this year's summer blockbuster films feature a lot of kids in some leading roles. Who are they? And how did they get there? We'll find out this morning in our Four Stars Report. Good to have you with us on this Monday morning. I'm Devin Skilly. And I'm Tammy Payne. We are glad you're beginning your morning and your week with us. You can expect another hot one. I know that's a big surprise for everyone. <laughs> that's right. And you didn't have to ask me about that either. You can no. kind of expect that today in July. Temperatures over the weekend made it up near 100. And all this week we're forecasting temperatures in the upper 90s. This morning, though, we do have some clouds to talk about. Thank goodness. The clouds are mainly in Kansas, but if you'll notice in western Oklahoma, some clouds are drifting to the east. Also, a few showers have popped up. Hallelujah for that. Uh, out in the Oklahoma Panhandle, there's not much out there, but at least a little rain to talk about. Heavy-duty stuff is way up to our north in parts of Nebraska and parts of Iowa. Those showers are moving to the south and to the southeast. But a stalled-out front in Kansas now will be pushing into Oklahoma, and when it gets here, we'll see a few scattered showers across parts of Oklahoma, but that's going to happen in northern parts of the state tomorrow. Today, partly cloudy, warm, and highs, there we have them, back up in the upper 90s across the state. So, at least we're talking about some clouds, not a whole lot of rain, but we do have some clouds in the forecast. Okay, thanks, Dan. In news this morning, the past few months, we've seen profits float away with some of the floodwaters at some of the state's top tourist spots. But it seems this ever-abundant sun that Dan's telling, telling us about is helping those spots. Just two months ago, Lake Eufaula looked like this. The muddy waters and water-soaked campsites kept tourists away. But now things are getting back to normal, and with the hot temperatures, Oklahomans are returning in record numbers. Merchants say it's a welcome sight after what they've been through. Well, it was pretty dramatic for, for quite some period of time. We were shut down for 12 whole days because the electric had gotten, uh, well, the water had gotten all the way up into the electric pole. Van Cleef says he lost $60,000 during the flooding says while the money is rolling in now, he'll probably just break even this season. In other news this morning, a man who escaped from the Lawton Community Treatment Center last week and allegedly kidnapped three people is behind bars this morning. Authorities say 23-year-old Albert Ray Johnson turned himself in to Midwest City Police yesterday. Police believe he is responsible for abducting two women from Yukon early Thursday morning, that from a nursing home. He allegedly robbed one of them before releasing them and taking off in their car. Now, after that, Johnson is believed to have come to Oklahoma City where he allegedly kidnapped a 17-year-old boy and forced him to drive him to Dallas. The boy was later released, but the kidnapper took off in his car also. Johnson escaped Thursday again from the Lawton Community Treatment Center where he was serving sentences for rape, attempted kidnapping, and first-degree robbery. The FBI says they may pursue federal charges against Johnson. An Oklahoma City woman is in custody after calling 911 to report that she had killed a man. We received a call to the emergency number. Police found the body of 19-year-old Rodney Ramsey shot to death last night. Police say Catherine Rose led them there. Authorities are calling the shooting an apparent domestic dispute, but so far no charges have been filed. Meanwhile, murder charges are expected to be filed today against a Norman man accused of killing his wife. 23-year-old Jennifer Denton was found shot to death Saturday evening. 31-year-old Mickey Denton, the victim's husband, is being held in the Cleveland County Jail. Investigators believe pilot error or possibly mechanical problems caused a Navy plane to crash last fall, killing an Oklahoma City sailor and four others. The student pilot was attempting to land when he smashed into the flight deck of the USS Lexington. Evidence shows the pilot may have had trouble with the throttle control. The exact cause is still under investigation, however, and recommendations have been made to change the training procedures. The leaders at the Industrial Nations Summit in Houston get down to business today. Let's update you on this and other world news. To aid or not to aid Moscow, that is the key question for the summiters. President Bush received a letter from Soviet leader Mikhail Gorbachev asking for help. Bush says he's considering sending people not cash, to help the Soviet Union with its financial troubles. Well, it was anything but quiet Sunday at the state capitol in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, as Bible-toting anti-abortion marchers circled the building. In response, lawmakers passed a bill that bans abortions except in cases of rape, 
incest, or if the mother's life is in danger. That's almost as restrictive as a bill the governor successfully vetoed, but this one has a chance, and it's now on the governor's desk. In other world news this morning, a source close to Muslim radicals in Lebanon say Iran has decided to use its influence to free another Western hostage, possibly a British hostage. Another source close to the Syrian military command in Beirut says he doesn't expect a release before the middle of the week. On a Times hazardous product with a checkered past is back on the market. It's a pest strip designed to kill flying insects. And Consumer Reports is advising the public to just keep the product out of your home. Brad Edwards tells us why. The problem product is this type of hanging pest strip. Some brands, like BioStrip, contain an active ingredient commonly known as dichlorvos. It's classified by the EPA as a possible human carcinogen. It's also known to cause liver and nerve damage in animals. But it's not just the active ingredient that makes Consumer Reports warn against it. It's the way these strips work. These pest strips constantly release insecticide vapor into the air in a room. And because of that continuous exposure, the risk of adverse health effects is much greater. Consumer Reports first warned about hanging pest strips more than 20 years ago. But three years ago, the EPA proposed stronger warning labels for products with dichlorvos. It later deferred that proposal to study the problem more. Some manufacturers have reformulated products like flea collars, which had contained dichlorvos, but others have not. And now, some pest strips with this chemical have begun to find their way back into stores. It doesn't make much sense to fumigate the air in a room just to kill a few flies. There are far safer alternatives. Good screens are the best defense against flying objects, but good old-fashioned fly swatter works just as good as any spray. I'm Brad Edwards, in your corner, News Team 4. <laughs> in fact, when it comes to flying insects, Consumer Reports says just avoid chemical sprays altogether. Still to come this morning, we will have some tips on tipping. We'll clear up the confusion on tipping if you haven't taken your summer vacation. And if you haven't, you may want to find some place cool. The hot weather stays with us, as Dan tells us, in just a minute. Across America, more and more men are discovering Valpac coupons. Okay, I'll see your $5 off an oil and lube job and raise you $10 off tire balancing and wheel alignment. Valpac coupons are packed with macho, manly men stuff. I'll raise you $200 off sporting equipment. Just look at the mail for the big blue Valpac envelope. And I'll bump you guys $10 off a month supply of diapers. Diapers? He's bluffing. Valpac coupons, America's favorite mail. There are a lot of full-size sedans out there. So why buy a Dodge Dynasty? Well, in addition to driver's side airbags, front wheel drive, available anti-lock brakes, and the longest powertrain warranty in its class, this Dynasty has the best fuel economy of any car in its class. Need more convincing? It also has the lowest price. Dynasty. For safety and value, any way you look at it, it's Advantage Dodge. If you're looking for a tremendous selection and incredible value, you just can't find a better place than the choice. The choice smorgasbord. I can really rely on aspirin. Joan McKee suffers from minor muscle pain. Rub it in here. Rub it in good. Aspirin relieves pain fast. And I don't smell like a medicine cabinet. Aspirin. Fast pain relief without odor. Aspirin contains no aspirin. This itchy rash needs special treatment. Maximum strength cortisone 5, with the medicine doctors recommend most, gets under the itch for soothing relief and help in healing. See? The rash is gone. Use cortisone 5, with the medicine doctors recommend most. You've been waiting for it, and now it's here. Hunsaker Lighting Gallery's annual closeout sale. Come in now for incredible savings. Hunsaker Lighting Gallery, May Avenue at Britton Road, next to Luby's. Join Westminster at worship this Sunday morning at 8.30 right here on Channel 4 or come to one of our three morning services at 4400 North Shore Tail. About nine minutes after the hour, I look back. It's not quite right. I always kind of look at uh, July 4th as being the midpoint of the summer. That's not quite right. Not exactly right. It's been awfully dry so far. It has been dry <laughs> and it has been very hot. Yeah. The temperatures the uh, next couple of days are going to be out of the 100s. We're talking the upper 90s, so psychologically, I guess, uh, <laughs> a little bit cooler. And uh, we have been uh, comparing ourselves really with some of the hot weather we've had in years past, but really you can't compare with 1980. 1980 is a scorcher that will probably go down in the record books. Uh, in fact, it is the uh, hottest, but it'll probably go down in the record books as uh, 
probably the most miserable feeling uh, July that we have had because not only did we have heat, in fact, in the metro, 24 days of 100 degree heat, we broke quite a few record highs and even morning temperatures got down to record levels. Uh, the highest that we hit was at the end of the month. We hit 108 degrees. We only had four tenths of an inch of rain. It was also very humid. I remember that. I was moving at that time and it was very, very warm. And this hot spell carried into parts of August, also very dry out there. And before this, uh, people were talking about 1936. 1936 in July, we had quite a few records. But uh, when you compare this July with that, it makes it feel kind of cool out there. So keep that in mind. It could be worse. Temperatures this morning are in the 70s at 80 degrees in Tulsa. We've got a south wind at 5 to 15. Down to the southwest, uh, temperatures in Mangum, 75 degrees. Up at Woodward and Gage at 79. Up at Enid, 79 degrees. Down in Sulphur and Davis, 75 degrees. In the metro, 77 Humidity is 71. The winds are south at 10 miles an hour, and the pressure is 30.10, and the pressure is holding steady. Take a look at the clouds moving out of Colorado in through Kansas, the Oklahoma and Texas panhandle. Right now, a little bit of rain across Texas County, and those showers are moving to the east at about 10 miles per hour. But uh, we'll continue with a few scattered showers, but unfortunately, they're going to be mainly north of Oklahoma. As this stalled out front continues to uh, migrate north and back down to the south, eventually that front's going to get enough push to clip right across northern Oklahoma. So when you see my forecast for tomorrow, I have included a slight chance for some scattered thunderstorms across northern Oklahoma. Most will be in Kansas, across parts of Missouri. But uh, we may see a little bit of a taste of rain. That'd be kind of nice. And then down to the south, we continue with some showers down there. And again, this front will slowly push to the east across the area. Highs today, mainly climbing up into the 90s. There'll be some temperatures up near 100 degrees, but mainly 90s. The hot stuff will continue in the southwest. And a pocket of 70s, will feel kind of nice across parts of the Rockies. And the forecast map for later today, notice I've got the green painted mainly across Kansas, parts of Nebraska and south, um, southern section of the Dakotas. And in the forecast tomorrow, I've got a little green painted in northern Oklahoma and some rain out to the west as well. Here's the forecast for Oklahoma for today on a Monday. Partly cloudy, warm, highs today, mainly in the upper 90s. Forecast tonight, we'll see partly cloudy skies dropping into the 70s for lows. And here's that forecast for Tuesday. Partly cloudy. Slight chance for a few thunderstorms across northern counties and highs climbing up into the 90s. Five-day outlook for the metro. What about our rain? Well, not going to happen today. 97, 97 on Tuesday and Wednesday. Thursday, yet another system will slide in. I'll include a 20% chance of rain on Thursday. And then Friday, it's going to cool all the way down to 91. So that's a little bit cooler than what we've had. Temperatures by Friday will feel kind of nice because we'll also have a north breeze out Good. there. For the first time in a long time. A veritable cold front. You bet. <laughs> we won't miss the three digits. No. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. We'll look forward to today's top stories when we come back. Hope you'll stay with us. celebrating the one-year anniversary of the Home Furnishings Mall. One year ago, we introduced the newest concept of furniture retailing to Oklahoma, the biggest selection of quality furniture all under one roof at the guaranteed lowest prices. And it's been a tremendous success. Our thanks go to the thousands of Oklahomans that have been in and bought from the mall. If you're one of the few that haven't shopped at I-40 in Portland, I invite you to come see it. You won't believe your eyes because we make quality affordable at Evans. Home Furnishings Mall! Evans has it all! I'd like to make a toast to my bride, the federal government, and my real estate pro. To my wife for our life ahead. To the government, especially HUD, for a great house that I can afford. And to a great real estate professional for showing us the ropes. He may turn out all right after all. And thank you each for the blenders. <laughs> Call your local real estate professional today and let them show you just how easy it can be for you to own a HUD home. No matter how you look at it, it's still the best chicken fry in the universe. The Chuck House Restaurant, Northwest 10th and Meridian. It's Twilight Tubers at Frontier City. 
Bring a Pepsi can any Tuesday through Thursday after 5 p.m. and two people get in for the price of one. Twilight Toofers, brand new and only at Frontier City. A Monday morning look forward at 6.15. Today's the day those vying for state offices will begin filing into courthouses across the state to do just that, file. In less than two hours, the official three-day filing period will begin for candidates seeking state offices. Of course, the governor's race is in the spotlight, but there are also 125 House and Senate seats up for grabs. Election board officials expect about 700 candidates to file during the three-day period, which will end Wednesday evening at 5 o'clock. Also looking forward this morning, welcome visitors could mean welcome dollars for the Paseo District. Every year the streets of Paseo Drive are filled with people attending the Paseo Festival, but you usually don't find the area looking this empty. Today, members from the National Trust will inspect the downtown area. They'll take a close look at the area just north of downtown Oklahoma City. The Paseo Revitalization Committee hopes for help. If they are willing to become involved in our project, it certainly enhances our ability to raise money locally. The uncle says it could take more than a half million dollars to improve incentives to begin revitalization. Well, an accident in sports that could have been much worse injures one of NASCAR's favorites. Here's Robert Allen with that, plus the Oklahoma connection for tomorrow's All-Star game. Good morning, everybody. The Major League Baseball players are on their annual summer break. The All-Star game will be tomorrow night at Wrigley Field in Chicago. And there is a good chance that a former Oklahoma Sooner pitcher will be starting on the mound for the National League. I talked to San Francisco Giant officials last night. They say manager Roger Craig, the Giant skipper who will skip for the National League, has chosen Jack Armstrong of the Cincinnati Reds to be his pitcher. Armstrong, of course, a former Sooner who's 11-3 and this year, having a great season. Now, yesterday the Giants were playing the Chicago Cubs. That just before the All-Star break, a doubleheader. Marvell Wynn up to bat for the Cubs. He thinks he's got a walk, but no. Jim Quick, the third base umpire, says he went around. He's out of there. Don Zimmer, the Cubs manager, not too happy about that. And he'll get the toss right there from Jim Quick. And then Don uh, Zimmer's going to come out and get his money's worth by arguing. Uh, there you see the Giants swept the Cubs yesterday. Let's go ahead and look at all the rest of the baseball scores in the American League. Minnesota over the New York Yankees, 6-3. to three. Baltimore in 11 innings over the White Sox. Seattle took care of Toronto 6-3. Detroit really rattled Kansas City 10-4. Milwaukee in a football score over the Angels 20-7. Oakland goes into the All-Star break with a victory over the Cleveland Indians. Other National League scores, the Astros over the Expos, and it was Philadelphia over Cincinnati by one run, 4-3. You saw the Giants sweeping the Cubs. New York red hot going into that All-Star break. They beat Atlanta by one. Pittsburgh over the Dodgers on the West Coast, and St. Louis beat San Diego 4-1. The 89ers also winners last night as they beat Tidewater. You always think of crack-ups as being the big danger in auto racing. Look at this action yesterday. Cleveland Grand Prix. That's Al Unser Jr. The fuel hose gets loose. Look at the crew members. Two of them were drenched with methanol, and you see the water being splashed on them. Unser Jr. also got some methanol on him in his, in his cockpit. His eyebrows, in fact, were singed. All three went to the hospital and reportedly are all okay. When Unser went out of the race, he was leading. Danny Sullivan took over the lead, and he beat Bobby Rahal to the checkered flag to win the Cleveland Grand Prix. When we come back a little later this morning, we're going to look at some football highlights of yours truly. We'll do that a little later. That's sports for now. Mm. That was a little scary there in the pits. That's very scary. Ooh. They were moving. Coming up, tips on tipping later in business and consumer news. And staying cool is the best tip we can give you to beat this weather. Dan's forecast is next. And in health, should vitamins be used as medicine? That question is causing a big debate, which will continue in a minute. During Epperson Photo Video's big Sony sale, we can save you hundreds of dollars on the newest Sony video equipment, like the Sony F33 camcorder. It's loaded with automatic features that make it easy to use. Great for low light use, rated at 4 lux, this camera has high-speed shutter, time date display, and can be yours for less than $45 per month. And if you buy now, we'll give you a six-day Florida vacation with your hotel-only minutes from Disney World and Epcot Center. Only at Epperson Photo Video, 3110 North May. 69 years ago this month, my grandfather bought his first dealership. I'm Shelley Clark for Jack Clark Chrysler Plymouth, 6100 North May. This Founders Month, we're featuring the luxurious Fifth Avenue and Imperial. Elegant, powerful, spacious. All for ten to fifteen thousand less than comparable American sedans. Fifth Avenue Imperial. 
Advantage Chrysler, Advantage Clark. Founders Month at Jack Clark Chrysler, where you don't just buy a car, you buy a dealer. Minor plumbing problems can quickly grow from drips to disasters. They need immediate attention. For any plumbing problem, call Sears Authorized Plumbing, the most trusted name in household repair. Your Sears Authorized Plumber can handle most problems the same day. Call Sears Authorized Plumbing today at 947-0357. That's 947-0357. Call Sears Authorized Plumbing today before it's too late. You've been waiting for it, and now it's here. Hunziker Lighting Gallery's annual closeout sale. Come in now for incredible savings. Hunziker Lighting Gallery, May Avenue at Britton Road, next to Luby's. Good Monday morning, Oklahoma. I'm Dan Threlko. Temperatures over the weekend made it up into the 90s. High temperatures from Sunday are in. 93 degrees in Hobart in the metro area. It felt a lot warmer than this, didn't it? Temperature made it up to 96 degrees. There were a few clouds around during the afternoon hours, but... Still, lots of sunshine. Up in Park City, the high temperature was 98. 98 in Tulsa over McAllister, the temperature made it to 96 degrees. Here's what's going on right now. We continue with clouds mainly to the west of the state, but they are slowly drifting to the east, and there's a stalled out front causing some rain in Nebraska and parts of Kansas. Later on this week, we'll see increasing chance for showers across parts of northern Oklahoma. Can you see the circulation? That's located 220. I should say the center of circulation is located 220 southwest of Cabo San Lucas. That's a hurricane down there, folks. It's called Hurricane Fosto, and it's moving to the northwest at 12 miles per hour, but packing some pretty good winds, 80 mile an hour winds. It is expected to move out towards the colder waters and begin to fizzle out, but I'll keep you posted this week on Hurricane Fosto down in the uh, Pacific Ocean. All right, let's get closer to home and find out what's going on. Some rain in the state out in the Oklahoma Pan had a little bit of water going this morning across parts of Cimarron and Texas counties. At last report, those showers were moving to the east at only around 10 miles per hour. But heavier thunderstorms are in Nebraska, parts of South Dakota, over towards parts of Iowa, moving to the south and the southeast. And again, we're starting to see a little bit of a change in the weather pattern. We're going to be seeing some energy from the north start to make it down. And there is some colder air, well, let me call it cooler air, located up in um, parts of uh, I wasn't going to call this Kansas, up in Canada, started to move down to the south, and very slowly we're going to see temperatures cool off just a little bit, and I think we'll see temperatures as much as 10 degrees cooler as we get into Friday, so temperatures out of the 100s for a couple of days, temperatures mainly in the upper 90s until the end of the week, then we're going to be seeing some low 90s, and towards Wednesday night and Thursday, a chance for a few showers and even possibility for a few thunderstorms in Oklahoma. Wouldn't that be nice? Across parts of the east, if you're headed there for today, in the southeast, only some spotty showers, but if you're headed on business today, up towards the northeast, expect to get wet. There are some morning showers right now in Pennsylvania and New York State, pushing to the south and the southeast. Out there right now, we do have a few clouds around. Temperatures are in the 70s across the state. It's 623. And in health this morning, tiny vitamin pills are sparking a huge debate in medicine these days. More and more doctors claim vitamins can be used to treat disease. Others say that's not true. This morning, Kathy Smith examines the growing controversy. Should vitamins be used as medicine? That question is sparking a hot debate in healthcare today. Most doctors insist that vitamins and minerals have little value in medical treatment, but a there growing number of physicians disagree. Of thinking. Well, consensus medicine is dogma and, and restricts advances. You, we should have the freedom to expand on that. Dr. Murray Susser is trained in orthodox medicine, but his approach is unorthodox. For the past 15 years, he's been using vitamins and minerals to treat certain conditions. Well, he takes your blood test, and he sees what you are deficient in. And um, I was really a mess. I, I can't really tell you exactly all the things he gave me, but um, I can show you a list of them. Mary Ann Hart suffered from chronic fatigue and muscle aches. After two months of taking Dr. Susser's prescribed vitamins and diet, her symptoms disappeared. It's a very clear example of how I see responses, clear physical responses from nutritional therapies, very often in conditions that were called incurable. But the subject of using vitamins as medicine is a controversial one. There are many physicians who believe that there is little value in this new approach. If anybody takes more 
than the needed amount of vitamins for any one day. The extra that we take is excreted into the urine and it's just wasted. It's not that it's stored in the body or does something extra for us. So at its best, it's worthless. And at its worst, it's quite dangerous. It's been proven that high doses of vitamin A and D can be toxic. Even those who favor vitamin treatments say it should be done under a doctor's supervision. I don't think it's a good idea to go to a health food store and have some clerk tell you, oh, take this, it'll cure your kidneys. I don't think that it's a good idea to go to some self-appointed nutritionist who says, uh, I can treat you better than your doctor. But vitamins and minerals aren't the only unorthodox treatments patients are trying today. Some are using homeopathy to cure illness. We'll look at that as our series continues. I'm Kathy Smith. While megadoses of vitamins can be harmful, doctors say there's nothing wrong with taking multivitamin supplements that provide 100% of your daily requirements. In the next half hour of News Team 4, we'll get a report on Monday morning traffic with Captain Perdue. We'll also meet three youngsters who have something in common. Left later in four stars. The next heavy rains this spring put a damper on tourist spots, but now business is booming. I'll tell you why when we come back. Hi, this is Dennis James. Physicians Mutual has just taken a major step toward eliminating one of the main concerns of people 65 or over. And that concern is the rising amount of health care costs that neither Medicare nor traditional Medicare supplement policies pay. But that's all about to change now, because now there's total senior care from Physicians Mutual. The Medicare supplement policy that pays every penny of every expense not fully paid by Medicare. That's right. As long as Medicare pays part, Total Senior Care will pay the rest, right down to the last cent. Now, I want you to write down this important toll-free number and then call it to get this free information kit on Total Senior Care. But first, let me tell you a little bit more about it. See, unlike other policies that pay only up to Medicare's allowable charge, Total Senior Care pays you the total difference between what Medicare pays and your actual cost. Now, you may hear of other plans that sound similar. But I'm telling you right now, with Total Senior Care, there's a big difference. In fact, Total Senior Care pays every penny of your Medicare hospital deductible, every penny of your skilled nursing care co-payments, and every penny of your medical expenses not fully paid by Medicare. And here's another important difference. Your Total Senior Care benefits can start immediately. There are no deductibles, none. No waiting periods, none. You're fully covered the minute your policy is issued. So to learn more about this remarkable plan, call this toll-free number right now to receive all the facts by mail. This information is free, and so is the call. There's absolutely no obligation. You're just calling for information. So don't spend another minute worrying about health care costs. Call this number right now. And I'm telling you this, you're going to be mighty glad that you did. Governor Buddy Romer. Good morning. Louisiana's legislature has put the abortion issue back in its governor's hands as the bill is rushed through in a surprise move. We'll tell you about that story coming up in this half hour of News Team 4 at 6. Good morning and welcome. We're glad you're with us. I'm Devin Skillion along with Tammy Payne and Dan Trelkeld, who has given us nothing but dry and hot weather lately. That's Not right. That it's your fault or anything. Well, I've been getting, well, the, getting uh -huh. the heat for it, so <laughs> to speak. Uh, but it looks like we're going to see temperatures cooling off just a little bit across the state. Don't get your hopes up, but... Looks like we'll see temperatures down a little bit by the end of the week. We're talking 97 degree heat for a couple of days. Then on Thursday, a few more clouds roll in. In fact, on Wednesday night, could even see some rain beginning across parts of the state. Also, that'll carry into Thursday. And then on Friday, temperatures down to 91 degrees. So it's not the big front that we were all looking for, right. but temperatures down 10 degrees are definitely welcome. Yeah, it might be a cooler weekend. Yes, it could be. Sounds good. Thanks. A couple of months ago, Dan, we would have welcomed all this sunshine. But instead, we got lots of rain and a lot of heavy flooding, as you'll remember. This past July 4th holiday, though, turned out to be a badly needed boost for recreation and tourist spots in Oklahoma. Springtime floods left their mark, and a lot of towns have been praying for relief. In fact, you'll remember this is the way Lake Eufaula looked back in May, the water line near the Fountainhead Resort. But now the water line is back to normal. During the flood, cabins, houses, and campsites were underwater. Beaches were washed away. But as News Team Force Anita Venetti reports, people and their community are recovering. 
It's really strange because we still get calls even today, the people inquiring whether we're still underwater or not. But Jerry Van Cleve says his restaurant and the Eufaula Cove Marina is open, and the hot weather is chasing people to the water for relief. Two months ago, conditions were so wet, it chased people away. Lake Eufaula was 15 feet above normal. Really and realistically, we lost one-fourth of the year when you consider three months of the business. Now, we didn't lose the primary or the best months, but we did lose some, some, some good months. Jerry says the Salty Pelican restaurant was shut down for 12 days, and it took several weeks for business to return to normal. Next door, Go Vacation's boat rental suffered, too. What hurt the tourism industry has hurt the whole community. And whenever you bring in that foreign dollar, it, uh, it makes a big impact on the community. And with uh, our customers, they go to the local grocery stores and hardware stores and boat shops. So, you know, it has definitely affected the economy here. Look at that one. You have stop in here. But there's hope for recovery now, thanks to the ongoing heat wave. Record numbers of people have flocked to vacation spots in the last few weeks. And city leaders in Eufaula say it could make up for their losses. So what Mother Nature took away last May, she may be giving back. At Lake Eufaula, I'm Anita Vanetti, News Team 4. And a lot of the other recreational lakes are reporting record crowds over the July 4th holiday as well. Well, since it hasn't rained here in Oklahoma City for a while, mandatory water rationing is in effect for some parts of the city. The order was imposed four days ago. The question, how are we doing so far? Uh, that's The water inspector tells us we're doing a pretty good job. He and others have answered hundreds of calls since rationing began on Friday. Compliance has been good, and the number of calls and questions about rationing are dwindling, but inspectors are ready for people who don't comply. Areas under mandatory rationing are Moore, Piedmont, and Oklahoma City. Residents living, uh, for the Oklahoma City only, residents living north of North 50th Street. And that includes War Acres in the village. No watering is allowed at all in those areas from 5 to 10 p.m., during other times, water is restricted to an odd-even system. Odd number addresses on odd days, even number addresses on evenly numbered days. Today, an odd day. The ticket for violating the rule, $70. Authorities are blaming the current heat wave for the death of an elderly Enid man this weekend. 65-year-old Calvin Trek walked away from a nursing home Friday. His body was found Saturday night inside a car about three blocks away from the nursing home. Officials say he died from Oz overexposure to the heat. And a hunt continues today for one of seven suspects in the shooting death of a 19-year-old Moore man. The murder happened last January. Police believe robbers were after gambling profits when they shot Chad Epperson. His father is now being charged with running a bookie operation out of his home. Police are searching for 35-year-old Arthur Rodriguez after he failed to surrender late last week. Two suspects have already pleaded guilty to lesser charges in the death Four others are awaiting trial. A Lawton prison escapee is back behind bars this morning. Albert Ray Johnson says he fled to Dallas because he'd never been there before. That's after a three-day journey took him through two states. Johnson admitted he abducted two women in Yukon. He told police he left their car at Bethany Hospital after he let them go. Then he says he caught a cab to Oklahoma City and from there went on to Dallas. Then he approached the 17-year-old uh, that worked for the Oklahoman. When he got into his vehicle, he saw the front page. Me, Argentina. Good morning, everybody. What's the most important football championship in the world? The Super Bowl, to a lot of us around here, it's the Orange Bowl, where the Big A champion goes. But around the world, it is the World Cup. Yesterday, the finals of the World Cup, Argentina and West Germany. Let's take a look at the highlights. The uh, game was actually decided on a penalty kick that was set up right here when Bowler of West Germany is tripped, and that set up the penalty kick. Look at the Argentina players. They are not real happy about it. They did a little bit of arguing. It was Andre Brema who got the honors. He comes up, strikes the ball, puts it in the side of the net. He scores, and our, uh, West Germany led Argentina 1-0. That's the way it finished. Uh, there are rumors now that Franz Breckenbaugh, the coach of Germany, will come over to the United States to help the Americans prepare for the World Cup coming up in 1994, which we'll host. Yesterday at Taft Stadium, our own Oklahoma City Spirit playing football, the football European style. Manuel Yusita put in the penalty kick, and the Spirit beat the Houston Dynamo by the score of 4-1. to one. Spirit now 4-4. Four and four. That's their record on the season. The Oklahoma City Twisters, American football team, opened up their season or their uh, careers in Oklahoma City 
by playing the Soviet Union team, the Moscow Bears, on Saturday night. They won that game 54 to nothing. Yours truly did play a little bit in that ball game as linebacker. I've caught a lot of flack about this play Bob Berry showed on Saturday night. Okay, I clipped the Soviet player. I'm sorry. I apologize to him after the game. But this was a legal play, probably my highlight of the evening. Not a bad tackle there, Robert. We will document my entire career one night in the minor league football system. It's all over now, but we'll document it tonight at 10. And that's sports for this morning. We'll never hear the end of that. Good he, job, though. He looked good. He did. Not bad at Impressed. all. Two let's, minutes before the hour. Let's check in with Dan Threlkeld, who's made his way back to the radar center. Not bad, huh, Dan? No, Robert's kind of the George Plimpton of uh, <laughs> athletics. Uh, we're awful proud of him, and uh, he'll be bruised up, but he'll be telling those stories to his grandkids for years and years. It's 77. There's a few clouds out there this morning. It's a dandy morning. By the lunch hour, lots of sunshine and 89 degrees. Looking ahead to 6 o'clock quitting time. 97 degrees, lots of sunshine, sunset time at 8.48. And coming up, a look at the five-day outlook. Does call for some cooler temperatures in Oklahoma by Friday. Tammy and Devin? Thanks, Dan. Also coming up, the only thing better for kids than a great summer of movies is maybe appearing in those movies. We'll take a look at some of the kids lucky enough to be a part of the blockbusters in just a minute. Belonging. It's a commitment to a lifetime of caring and sharing. A commitment to raising a family, giving guidance, patience, and love. It's a commitment to caring, showing the way, making things easier. That's the commitment of the Farm Bureau family, too. The commitment to provide strength and security for your family, your home, your life. Farm Bureau, where belonging makes a difference. At Bob Mills Furniture, we must be doing something right because parents are telling us they can't find anything to compare to the Captain's Corner from Craft Wood Designs. Look, it features the bunk on top, the side ladder with the desk, and the lighted hutch, the six drawer chest, and the lighted bookshelf. All solid wood, just $399. Plus, we include absolutely free the Sealy mattress. Parents, this is a must for the kids' room. So see it today, every night till 9 o'clock at Bob Mills Furniture I 40 in Portland, the working man's friend. Some things are just natural about Oklahoma, like barbecues, county fairs, and rodeos. Things so much a part of our state that we wouldn't know what to do without them. Well, natural gas is like that. It's one of the great things our state is known for. Environmentally clean, abundant. It's no wonder a high-efficiency natural gas furnace, together with a high-efficiency air conditioner, is the best choice for Oklahoma weather. So ask for gas. It's the natural choice, and it's the Oklahoma thing to do. Seven minutes before seven, our four stars report this morning. While most kids are spending their camp or summer, rather, a vacation at either home or at camp, some have some very special projects going on. This morning, we meet three young stars with something in common. Hit movies. You're a tough guy. You do a lot of pansy things. Meet 11-year-old Charlie Cosmo, known to millions as the kid from the hit movie Dick Tracy. As the star of Cinema Paradiso, Salvador Cachillo is breaking hearts at the tender age of 10. Tell you what, put me down for 50 just to make sure. And this is 14-year-old Gabriel Damon playing the evil hob in RoboCop 2. It seems that the bigger the film, the younger the stars. How do these kids get the role? For Charlie, all it took was a family vacation to Los Angeles. We saw the filming of Punky Brewster. 
And uh, in the middle of the night, I was with my mom, said, gee, Mom, I can do this sort of stuff. Look into it. For most kids, growing up is tough enough without adding an acting career into the equation. But Salvatore takes it all in stride. No, I am a I'm a normal child. I like to go to school. I like to play. I don't feel I'm different from other children. Gabriel has already learned that an acting career has its price. A lot of people are jealous. That's something, you know, and they find every possible thing they can to pick on you about. With the combined 20 films between them, these hotshot kids show no signs of slowing down. Gabriel is currently shooting an Oliver Stone film. Salvatore is hoping to work with Robert De Niro soon. And Charlie, well, Charlie has set his sights beyond acting. I want to do acting until I'm out of school. After that, I really seriously doubt it. Uh, directing is more of a possibility. You're all right, kid. I'm Sharon Nash, reporting. <laughs> well, we haven't heard the last from no, him. We like He's that a cutie. Mom, check that out. Yeah. Check into it. Check into that. Okay. He was really good in Dick Tracy. Have you seen it? Yes, I have. He's good. He was a highlight. He was. It was fun. It was fun. Well, check <laughs> into put the your weather. Kids in the movies, then. Right. I got to be honest. Some, <laughs> I think some kids are watching this. His mind saying, is just rolling. Some kids are watching this, and I can do that five-day thing. Let's <laughs> check into that, Mom. For us, 97 degrees, not only today, but Tuesday and Wednesday, but a front up, to, up in Kansas is headed in, and when it gets here, we'll see a few more clouds around and a chance for some rain. On Thursday, a 20% chance of rain and thunderstorms, and look at that. By Friday, the high temperature, 91. Parts of northern Oklahoma will have highs in the 80s. Looking ahead to the weekend, looks like temperatures should be very nice. Not as hot as they were this past weekend. Mom, I want to grow up and be just like Dan. We hear that a lot. <laughs> yeah, I'm you sure. You do. I'm sure you do. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Let's check your Monday morning traffic now with Captain Purdue. Good morning, Jim. Well, good morning to you. We're off to a pretty good start this Monday morning. No accident to report. However, the Broadway extension right now is bumper to bumper southbound. So let's buckle up and drive friendly. Captain Purdue and Red Rose. Over. Thanks, Captain. We'll check back at 725, and traffic picks up a little bit more. Here now, a final look at the top stories that we're watching on this Monday morning. The waters are finally back to normal in the big tourist and recreation spots of Oklahoma. While the dry weather has many needing rain, it is just what the cash registered ordered in the perennial tourist hotspots around the state. And more on this story on today, coming up in just a couple of minutes. The toughest abortion law in the country could come to pass in Louisiana. Lawmakers attach the bill to a flag-burning bill. It would allow abortions except in cases of rape, incest, or when the mother's life is threatened. It's now up to the governor. Again, more on this story on today in a couple of minutes. And Buddy Romer had all, already vetoed one bill because it did not include those rape, incest, and uh, uh, mother's life endangerment uh, policies. So there's a good chance that he may consider this one a lot more seriously. Mm -hmm. More coming up. First, right. water rationing in the news. That's well. right. Today is an odd day. Are you right. an odd or an even, by the way? I'm an odd. You're an I'm odd. an odd. An odd. I'm you're an very, even, as it turns out. No, you're out. very odd. <laughs> yeah. You're an even today. But uh, keep you? that in mind. And that uh, does not imply between the hours of uh, 5 and 10 o'clock. During that time, no watering is allowed. So keep that in mind. And out across Oklahoma, no rain forecast today 97 the high thanks dan try to stay cool today make it a good day we'll see you later bye-bye bye-bye